still increasing. This is great. We're going to have a packed house tonight. Fantastic. <laughs> now, by the way, here's the best news for everybody that showed up early. Uh, you guys get dibs on the best seats. And so please go ahead, pick out the best seat in the house. Uh, 50 yard line, if you would like. <laughs> All right. those numbers are still climbing i see we have somebody already claiming 50 yard line so fantastic and then i see also my audio is a little funky so i will try to be a little bit louder hopefully i don't scare anybody away thank you for being here we're going to get started in just a minute or so Very curious how many of our actual STARE students are attending this meeting with their families. I'm hoping a lot. This is all your stuff, guys. I hope you're here, ready to pay attention, take some notes, get some good info. All right, so looks like our numbers have slowly slowed down. We want to be very respectful, of course, of everyone's time tonight. And so uh, we're going to begin. And, and just a reminder to everyone that this session is going to be recorded. And so you guys will have access to it later on. But uh, overall, welcome. We're very excited to, got, to have you guys here for our sophomore college information night. Um, this is going to be a cool event, we hope. Um, tonight, we're going to be focusing on surprise. The sophomore year experience, we're going to be discussing 10th grade and really looking at like what does it take to have a successful sophomore year campaign. Uh, additionally, we're going to be focusing on like sort of where are we in our march to college. Uh, it's a four year march and we're on year two. It's a big year. And so uh, I, we think we're going to have some some good information for you guys tonight. Um, tonight. You're going to be hearing a little bit from myself. Uh, for those that I don't work with, uh, I am Mr. Quirey. I am one of the lower division counselors. Uh, we are also going to be hearing from Ms. Hansen, who is the other lower division counselor, my colleague. And then we are very, very excited to have a guest speaker tonight uh, from the University of Portland. He is the Associate Director of Admissions. Mr. Martin Williams is going to sort of give us some perspective on um, and some perspective really from the other side, looking at high schoolers and what, what are colleges looking for? What are, what are some of the ways that, um, what are the things that students need to be aware of in terms of being the best student and applicant they could be and what are colleges looking for? So we're gonna get to hear from him uh, to sort of conclude our night. Um, we expect that our presentation is gonna last just about 50 minutes or so. Um, one thing that we know is that there's gonna be a lot of information tossed your way tonight. So we really want you guys um, to be able to, um, to, to have a chance to ask your questions. And so um, as we present very shortly, if not already, you will see in the chat, we're going to be including a questions form where along the way, if you have any general questions, you can click on that link, you can put in your question, and then over the next week or so, Ms. Hansen and I are going to answer those in sort of an FAQ setting uh, or uh, set up and we'll be sending all that um, information out to you guys um, later in the next week or so. And, and so if you have questions, that's going to be the place um, to get that done. Um, but then to any of the students that are in, in the room, this is most important. If there's one thing that I'm really going to discuss tonight, it's really you taking ownership of the process at this point. We're sophomores, right? Uh, you need to be taking ownership of the process moving forward. And so if you have any specific questions about where you're at, please schedule time with Ms. Hansen or I, and we will work with you obviously on a one-to-one -one basis and, and get this thing moving for you. And so that's a, a little bit of what to um, expect for tonight. But before we begin, as always, it's always nice to take a moment 
even when we're talking about things as exciting, but sometimes even stressful as, as college and college prep. It's good to remember that we're always in the holy presence of God. And so I'm going to be reciting the Sarah School Prayer, and I hope all of our families, if, if you want to, can take a second and, and join us. And so in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. <clears throat> Lord God, from you comes all that is good, all our talents and abilities. Help us develop these gifts even when it means hard work. Help us face the reality of working together as a community. When necessary, help us deal with pain and disappointment. Be with us in our endeavors. In the spirit of Junipero Serra, let us never give up. Let this dedication in our lives today help us grow in faith, maturity, and life for tomorrow. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm sorry, it seems that we're having a little bit of trouble with the with the uh, sound right now. If you can just hold on for one sec, we will restart the presentation and the slides. Just give us one quick sec. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, just as a reminder for everybody, uh, my name is Mr. Quirey, and I'll be working with homerooms 2A, 2B, 2C, and 2D. And Ms. Hansen will be working with homeroom 2E, 2F, 2G, and 2H. Uh, we want to make sure that we're available to your sons. They have access to both our email addresses, which are here, as well as our You Can Book Me page. So that way, students can pull up our exact calendar. They will schedule a time during their lunch, during their independent study, directed study, their ARC session, before school or after school. Ideally, we're not interfering with class time, but students will be able to book their appointment with us. They'll know we'll be there ready for them to support them through whatever it is they need some help with. We really want to make ourselves available to your sons. That is our ultimate mission. We wanna be, the best resource available to your sons for any questions really that they have about Sarah High School. We understand that high school can be a very busy time, but luckily there's just a lot of great support here at the school through teachers, through administration. And again, hopefully your son believes this through your counselor. Um, I always really stress the importance of the weekly family meeting. Usually when I have a family session, I try to stress that one of the greatest things that can happen in high school is a student learns uh, over the course of the, the four years to really become autonomous and independent in their journey in high school, to really take ownership of the process. And one way they can do that is through PCR. I know a lot of times parents will sometimes obsessively had a great worry, had a great concern, had a great care. Um, check PCR every single day, wanting to make sure that their son is on the right track. And that can just be really overwhelming for the student. It can also be really overwhelming for the parents. And so I love stressing as a great resource to the family, the weekly family meeting where a family gets together, their son opens up the PCR account and goes point by point. It could take 10 to 15 minutes checking in on grades, having those sort of dinner time discussions on what classes are, are going well, what, uh, how a students going to use their time for office hours that week, the good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, so that way it's all out on the table. And the PCR is obviously one of the best resources available to families. 
Another thing that we've been working on uh, the last several years, and, and hopefully um, you guys have found benefit to them as well, is our counseling newsletters. Some of these newsletters are academic in nature, but some of the ones that I'm really um, proud of are our mental health and wellness moment newsletters that we send out several times a semester. Uh, for example, uh, I believe this week actually, we're sending out one on what the adults need to know about a really tough topic suicide awareness. Uh, for those that don't know, September is Suicide Awareness Month, and it's, it's a really good uh, but yet sobering um, presentation on the struggles teens are going through and what the adults need to know. We've also done some of these uh, wellness newsletters talking about uh, issues like vaping, stress management, how to talk to teenage boys about teenage problems, things like that. So we do hope that our counseling newsletters are, are a resource to your family. And of course, the sarahhs.com website is the one-stop shop for everything Sarah High School. And we encourage families to explore all the, the great things that are on that site. I guess if I had to sum up what the overall Sarah Counseling Department's philosophy is, it's we really want students to be proud of their work, to be proud of themselves and to really take ownership of the high school experience. And so we want to walk with students in that process. We wanna help them through their academics, discovering the new social world of high school and ultimately getting prepared to be the best college student they could someday be. Um, we do this by trying to be available and accessible to students and their families. We're not gonna be a program that just meets with students mid-junior year to sort of cram the, the whole college process. We will not be that. Uh, through our one-on-one -on -one meetings, through all the homeroom counseling groups that we offer, um, we really do hope to better prep lower division students, freshman, sophomore year students, for all the endeavors that they will face as upper division students, um, because that's where the, the college prep piece will really pick up. So instead of trying to just cram it all into junior, senior year, we're going to sort of build that slowly but surely over the lower division experience uh, and leading into the upper division experience. Now, how are we doing that? Uh, we're going to be introducing some of the best and uh, really some of the most important resources a student's going to have that are going to help them with their college search. And we're going to do it in a steady way to where it's not overwhelming to the student. So for example, uh, this week, uh, this, or this past week, we actually worked with some of our sophomore homerooms. I met with 2A and 2B. Ms. Hansen met with 2E and 2F. The other homerooms will be getting this presentation next week. But introducing Maya Learning, which is taking the place of Naviance and using that programming to, to show students how to really have those first sort of, again, dinner time conversations on uh, on college and, and what are some of the things that you're looking for. Uh, we introduced to them a program called Scattergrams where they can see what it takes uh, in terms of admissions to qualify for some of these schools. Um, in future meetings, we're going to be continuing to stress topics like maximizing the opportunities that Sarah offers. We're going to be discussing and taking various personality inventories to really help a student understand first themselves better, to understand their strengths better, and then to use uh, the typology that is created from those inventories to maybe, again, for the first time ever, for some guys, have those first thoughts about what would I want to study in high school or in college, excuse me. What, uh, what areas uh, would I want to explore? Um, some guys may have some ideas. Some guys may have no clue. Some guys don't even know what they're doing, you know, what they're eating for dinner tonight, let alone asking them about what do you want to do with your whole college experience. And so again, we're going to be uh, introducing these topics to the students in a, um, in a direct but stressless way. So that way they get um, used to having these conversations really again, hopefully then having those conversations at home with their families. One of the most important things I think that can happen in sophomore year is stressing that students are going to get to where they're supposed to go. All of our students are going to be okay. We want to make sure that guys get to wherever they're going in a healthy, safe, and happy way. The world's been really stressful lately. 
And so one thing that we focus on a lot sophomore year is healthy habits. And we do this through um, a lot of different events, through a lot of different ways. Uh, for example, some of you parents may have seen a uh, on uh, the Sarah social media that we had a Wellness Wednesday recently where we did a stress management presentation as well as offering students a chance to chill for a little bit, get away from the classroom, hang out with friends, sample some workshops on stress management, for example. We had yoga sessions, deep breathing and meditation. Um, we also offered the uh, opportunity to exert some energy through uh, sports and basketball and all different things. We even had a, we even had a jam session in the music room, which was, was pretty darn popular. And so we tried to give this to the guys as just a way to recognize priority one is taking care of yourself. Finding the opportunity to unplug, get away from the classroom, take care of ourselves. One thing that we're also gonna be discussing this year is something that I think Ms. Hansen gets credit for it, uh, for terming it, the Padre pivot. Sophomore year, uh, guys are starting to get a sense of what they're willing to invest their time in. And so maybe a lot of guys came in I'm going to be the greatest starting quarterback in Sarah high school history uh, because I was the best player on my eighth grade flag football team. And then all of a sudden they realize that that's not going to be their path. Instead of giving up, we want to encourage students to pivot to the next thing, find the next opportunity, take advantage of all the different things that Sarah can offer. And I'm really happy about the conversations that we have with students and, and their parents about helping them find that pivot. And so if you or your son um, are having that struggle of pivoting to the next thing, trying to find their path in high school, please have them connect to one of us, to their counselor. Because ultimately there's something new here for every single Sarah student. I really strongly believe that in all my heart. Finally, uh, one thing that we're gonna be doing uh, this sophomore year is offering uh, mental health trainings and workshops to the students. That's actually something that I'm going to get to directly work with the guys on that I'm very excited uh, about. The first one is a, a presentation and workshop on what is mental health. Um, let's discuss why guys don't receive enough help for mental health, the stigma behind it sometimes. And then what is stress? What is the stress response and how can we track it in our own lives? We're also going to be doing a follow-up presentation to that based on how do we strengthen our overall wellness? What are the good healthy habits that we can do to take care of ourselves uh, through the endeavors of high school? Because really we're trying to train students and teach students the importance of finding balance in their lives. It is so stressful to be a student. I know COVID is sort of um, the big trigger word as the cause of everything bad in the world right now. But people don't remember that Student mental health was a, a concern nationwide before COVID ever hit our shores. And so knowing that there's so much expectation on guys to, to get the best grades out there, to meet new friends, to make the right choices in life, uh, they're dreaded about that, the F word, the future, <laughs> uh, becoming involved and trying to find their path. We really want them to do that in a healthy way through finding proper balance. Again, that's something that we work with our students on, having those conversations uh, and helping them sort of, you know, I'm going to go Goldilocks and the Three Bears here, finding their right porridge, not too hot, not too cold, just right. And so we will meet with your students, your sons, uh, even, for example, on schedules to make sure that they are adequately challenged but not overwhelmed. We want to make sure that they sample the opportunities that are out there without burning themselves out and overwhelming themselves. Finding that balance is so important. Sophomore year inevitably leads to questions like, what should we be doing right now? There's always that worry, like, are we on the right path? Are we doing the right things? And the short of it is, yes. If you're working with your counselor, if you're taking the right classes um, that Sarah offers and you're giving it your best to go, then yes, you are on the right path. Um, but one thing that's important is always uh, something that I always say, controlling the controllables. There can be a lot of worries about the future. You know, how am I going to fill out that college app years from now, things like that. And that can be overwhelming. So we want guys to focus on what can you control in the here and the now. One of those things is how they get involved. 
what are they doing to show productive, successful member of the community? And so we really want to have guys try and explore areas of interest, try to find leadership within those areas of interest. And like a really good example was having students who didn't find their place freshman year, who were unsure of how they would fit. Working with their counselor, they were able to start up their own clubs here. And so now they have a leadership role in our community as a club moderator and having started and founded their own club. Really cool stories like that um, are available here. And for any of the students listening to this or any of the parents listening to this, if you feel like your son needs a little bit of help in terms of finding those things that he's gonna get involved with, again, please, please, please seek out the counselor and check in with us because we wanna help you find those things. Ultimately, we're working with our students on building up their resume uh, of all the different things that they've accomplished and tried during their high school experience. In summation, it's a four-year process and we're sort of in the beginning of year two, 10th grade. And so informational nights like tonight um, and then uh, there'll be other ones coming up junior, senior year as well. But they're really just the touch base to keep connection open between families and the school to make sure we're all on the right path. We're all getting the right information. One of the events that'll be coming up, honestly, it's my favorite event of the school year, our college fair night, uh, which will be virtual for obvious reasons. But it's where we will have anywhere from 120 to 150 different colleges available. Normally we would have that here on our campus, but now there'll be virtual events where students and their families can meet with recruiters, can meet with admissions teams, can meet with ambassadors from all the different colleges out there. And wow, it's such a cool event because it really makes the game real. Students are now able to see like, oh, wow. Like visually they can see it. That is what I'm aiming for. All the work that I'm putting in is aiming towards this. Um, of course, we're gonna be continuing our counseling groups. Um, going over all the different important topics that I've already kind of addressed. But a big one to look forward to are the college advising seminars that juniors will be having. That's what we're ultimately building towards. It's an eight session piece for students um, breaking down the college advising process, investigating schools, and then ultimately figuring out what schools do we want to apply to. Uh, it's such important content that it's now an actual one academic unit class. And so please know that this demonstrates that there is a tried and true path that Sarah is following. And so keep the faith, trust in your Sarah team, trust in your sons uh, to, to get this job done. Uh, of course, we're gonna be doing our student and parent meetings, different application and financial aid workshops. These are all things to look forward to down the line. Sarah and the counseling office has a path, has a road to get your son to college, as long as he's willing to meet us halfway and do his job as a student. And so with that, I'm gonna hand off to Ms. Hansen. Thank you. Hi parents and Padres, this is Christy Hansen, the other sophomore counselor. I'm so happy to be here with you tonight. Um, this slide talks about the college admissions criteria and they are in order of importance. So you'll see that the top two and the bottom two are in yellow. And those um, are required by all of the colleges and universities. Um, the ones in the middle that are white, the admission test scores, of course, most schools are now test optional. Um, and for UC and state schools, CSUs, there is no essay or writing sample. There is no counselor recommendation or teacher recommendation. So those mostly apply to private schools and some out of state, state schools and universities. So grades are the most important. Strength of schedule, which means honors and AP classes is second most important. Then we have admission test scores if you choose to submit them essay or writing sample, counselor recommendation, teacher recommendation, and then all colleges will ask about community service and work and extracurricular activities. So the one main difference between the UC and CSU application is the UC application has eight questions and they ask the students to answer four of those questions. In addition, um, UC and CSU only look at sophomore and junior year grades. 
Okay, so some out of state schools and all private schools will look at grades in a more comprehensive way. And we'll get into that in future slides. So here is um, how colleges rated the importance of each criteria. Uh, as you can see, grades um, are of considerable importance. Um, you may look at the bottom where it says, well, extracurricular is 7.4. That's just for the considerable importance category. If you look at moderate and maybe even limited, they do play a role. Um, the second item I wanted to point out that is becoming more and more important for the college admission process is students demonstrated interest. So a student is able to demonstrate interest by going to a college and doing a tour or by attending a rep visit here on campus. And what happens during those, those visits is that the college gets the students information, you know, name, email, and they know now that you have made an extra effort to get to know their school and maybe even their campus. And that is becoming more and more meaningful in the college application process. So subject requirements, SARA curriculum requirements, UC and CSU subject requirements for admission, all other college and university requirements. So by graduating from SARA, you will either meet or exceed all subject requirements for all colleges. Uh, most colleges follow the lead of the UC system and uh, the UC system only requires three years of science. Our students do four years. They only require three years of math. Our students do four years. So all subject requirements will be met through the SARA curriculum by the time your son graduates. So again, University of California, they have their weighted A to G subjects. So this is um, how the colleges differ in how they calculate the grade point average. So University of California and California State Universities uses, uses a weighted A to G subject um, GPA. So they pick certain subject areas and they will weight um, the classes that are honors and AP. But again, they only count grades in the sophomore and the junior year. And that's why we emphasize sophomore year. We really emphasize to the students that the most important thing they can do this year is to get the best grades possible. Private and out-of-state colleges will look at ninth, 10th, 11th, and first semester of senior year grades. So it is much more comprehensive. Um, and the UCs and CSUs don't count the pluses and minuses, okay? It's another difference in how they calculate their GPA. So a B plus and a B minus are both counted as a solid B, okay? An A minus would count as an A. So everything counts. Grades are used to determine the GPA. Placement in honors classes and awards that will be listed on college applications participation in sports and activities, all grades, courses, and credits earned through SARA will be listed on your transcript, which leads us to the SARA transcript. So this is what your son's transcript will look like. I think we went over this a little bit in the freshman presentation. Uh, you can see first semester and second semester grades here. Um, a full year of a class is, is one unit. Uh, a one semester of a class would be half a unit. And the most important part of the, are these two GPAs. So the weighted GPA includes all your extra points for being in honors for AP classes, okay? And the unweighted GPA does not include um, any of the honors points for those classes. And I see both here are the weighted, here's the unweighted and this would be the weighted for semester one and then semester two, okay? And the PSAT test. So I know that um, there's a lot of questions about this. In past years, we have offered the PSAT test to sophomores. However, with the pandemic and all of our restrictions, we are only offering it to juniors. And the junior PSAT is the National Merit Scholar Qualifying Test. Uh, we offer it to students on October 13th, which is National Testing Day, and it is only the junior year 
PSAT that is the NMSQT test. So a National Merit Scholar is someone who scores in the top 1% across the nation on the PSAT. And once they qualify, then there's an additional application. And based on the information in that application, which asks about grades and activities, then they can be a finalist and a National Merit Scholar. So should a student take the PSAT as a sophomore, it would not be a National Merit Scholar qualifying test. So testing SAT and ACT. So most colleges are test optional, which means your son is not required to take the test. UCs and CSUs have declared that they are test optional at least until 2025. If your son decides to take one of the two tests, we recommend to start testing towards the end of junior year. The reason for this is the math portion of the SAT has a lot of algebra too. So if your son is taking advanced algebra as a junior, you're gonna want him to have completed as much time in the classroom as possible so that he can get the most answers correct in the math portion of the SAT. And the same with the English. So if your son may be in an advanced math class, however, what they learn in English class will also contribute immensely to how well they score on the English portion. And that is because they are increasing their vocabulary, their learning comprehension, and their ability to analyze passages. So the more time they spend in the classroom, the more advantage they are gonna have on doing well on the SAT. As sophomores, um, towards the end of sophomore year, we help the students connect college, their college board account to Khan Academy for preparation. Khan Academy has this fantastic program, which is free, that will take a student's PSAT scores, look for the weaknesses uh, in the test score, and create a new test that focuses on the student's weaknesses. So um, in addition to that, Khan Academy will put you on a test prep schedule. So if you put your test date, your SAT or ACT test date into the, um, into the Khan Academy, it will put you on a prep program telling you how much you need to study each day and also when to take your practice tests. It's a fantastic service and it is free, which is the best part. So we do recommend that you take the test twice in spring of junior year and fall of senior year. Um, you are welcome to take it a third time, either before or after those time periods. Uh, we recommend twice because more than that usually does not improve the score. Um, and now best of all, the greatest bonus of all is we are now doing school day testing for SAT. So in years past, we had asked the students to sign up for SAT early so that they could make sure they can take the test at Sarah. Taking the test in a comfortable environment with proctors that are often their teachers um, lends a lot of comfort. It's an incredibly stressful test. So taking the test in a comfortable environment is definitely an advantage. And now because we are doing school day testing, all Padres are guaranteed to be able to take the SAT at Sarah in a comfortable space. So um, it's a great new addition to our programming and we are going to be offering that to juniors in the spring and seniors in the fall. In addition, we are working on having Saturday testing for SAT at Sarah High School at ACT I'm sorry, that was ACT. ACT is not as impacted as SAT. Uh, more students take SAT. So should your son decide to take the ACT, they will likely get a seat at Sarah High School. So next steps. Um, so making sure sophomores are filling out their CSF, California Scholarship Federation forms. They should have received an invitation in their email if they qualified. NHS is National Honor Society, and that's for juniors and seniors. It has a much longer uh, application and also a service component. And we highly recommend that if your son qualifies for these honor societies, that they do fill out the forms and become members. Again, sophomore year, keep up your grades. The principal's list is a 3.5 and above. Honor roll is 3.0 and above. 
get to know your counselor. This is really important because your counselor writes that letter of recommendation and the better your counselor knows you, the better able they will be to describe you more intimately and specifically to a college admissions department. Become familiar with Maya Learning. So we've done this with the sophomores in our advisory seminars. We introduce them to Maya Learning, how to look up colleges, uh, how to see the videos of the colleges, how to learn about colleges, and they actually had a lot of fun with it. So continue to become familiar with Maya Learning and all that it has to offer. Attend future college information nights, attend virtual college events, and visit college campuses when you can. I would now like to introduce Marty Williams from the University of Portland, which is an excellent private Catholic school in Portland, Oregon. We are fortunate to have him here to discuss the admissions perspective of the college application process. Hello, everyone. My name is Martin Williams. I am the Associate Director of Admissions at the University of Portland. I am, in fact, a recovering Californian. You are my people. I am the Bay Area rep. For the, so that means I get to come down and visit schools, talk to people virtually from my high schools in the Bay Area, but it also means I get to read the applications from students in the Bay Area. So you have to be nice to me. Uh, University of Portland, for those who are unfamiliar, is a is the is Oregon's only Catholic university. So we're the only game in town when it comes to higher education affiliated with the Catholic faith. We are not Franciscan Jesuit, nor are we Christian brothers. We are associated with a congregation of Holy Cross priests. These are the same folks that run Notre Dame out in Indiana. So you can always remember us as the younger, more attractive sister of Notre Dame. Uh, I've been asked to talk a little bit about the application review process. Now you might be wondering, uh, just sophomores, why do we need to know this now? Well, two reasons why. Number one, you go to a college prep school, and so you want to be prepared for the college application process. Another reason is when I give this presentation to seniors, typically their response was, I wish I knew this two years ago. So this is just going to be a quick introduction to what we do on our side when we are reviewing applications from students from Sarah High School. What I like to always begin with is what we've been hearing lately in the media uh, that, I can't even see it, that Stanford only accepted 4% of their application pool. That is highly, highly, highly competitive. UCLA last year had 150,000 applications. Less than 1% of college students across the country attend schools like the Ivy Leagues. And this, oh, and to add insult to injury, we all heard about the admissions scandal and parents using their influence, uh, their money to get their kids in through what they call the side door. Uh, very much a, a cheating scandal of the highest degree. And students hear these stories, parents hear these stories, and it leaves the impression that it's impossible to get into college. And that's just not true. But what I want to do is I want to help you understand what it is that we look at when we see these applications. Now, what I like to do is, is use the example of, let's say we have one spot left, and there's two students with a 3.50 GPA, okay? Solid GPA coming out of Sarah. Uh, why would one student look more attractive than the other on the admissions side of things? Well, the first thing we're gonna look at is not necessarily the grades. The grades is what you hear is the most important thing, but what is it actually a better indicator of success of a student in college is the college prep curriculum you go to a college prep school. So you are provided this curriculum already, okay? Now again, we have two students with a 3.50 GPA. Uh, how does one get become more attractive? Well, we're gonna look at the core classes that you take, English, math, science, social studies, and foreign language. Now at uh, Sarah, they make you take all these classes. So what may 
kind of bump you ahead of some of your peers in regards to this curriculum, well, it's those honors courses, those AP courses. So the student that has six AP and honors courses with that 3.5 is gonna look better than the student that just had the graduation requirements. Other tools that are used in the evaluation process, trends and grades. I always like to bring this up to the good college prep Catholic schools because a lot of students, especially boys, have trouble with the transition to high school because of its intensity. But they kind of get their feet on the ground. They get uh, a, a better understanding of what is uh, needed. Uh, and they understand a little bit more in the process of their education. And so grades tend to increase sophomore and junior year. Now, when we are seeing the applications, we are not seeing senior year grades. So we're gonna be looking for that strong ending at the end of junior year. An upward tick in trends and grades is gonna look a lot better than the downward tick, obviously. Junior year is gonna be the most important year because it's the last year of evidence we have of your ability to do well. Test scores, uh, you, you've seen, uh, you've heard a lot of changes in testing this past year due to the pandemic. Uh, some might be wondering why we even have test scores. I think the test scores were instituted uh, with good intentions. When you consider that there are 50% more 4.0s in this country than there were 10 years ago, you start to realize there's a little bit of great inflation out there. I'm sure some of you complain that uh, the intensity at Sarah is a lot greater than those at San Mateo High School. Uh, not necessarily true, but you might have that impression. Test scores were a way for schools to kind of determine uh, the quality of a student's education. So a student that has a 4.0 and gets an 1100 uh, SAT score from Florida is going to look very different than the 4.0 from Sarah that gets a 1350. Again, it's just an evaluation tool. The good news is most schools have gone test optional. That's mainly because students were not able to sit for a test during the pandemic. And it's grown in popularity uh, because really the one thing that SATs and ACTs determine is a student's wealth. The wealthier the student, the better they're gonna do on the SATs. And so schools are trying to look beyond test scores. So you will not be placed at a disadvantage if you were not to either submit the scores because you didn't have them or if you chose not to uh, submit them. Letters of recommendation are important because it allows us to uh, gain context from someone that knows you inside the classroom. Uh, and then of course the writing piece. And I want to expand on these last two uh, bits a bit more. Uh, again, this is two years away. You know, you're going to remember some of this. You're not, you're not going to necessarily recall all of it, but I just want to introduce some of the do's and don'ts in regards to these last two uh, subject areas. So, in your essays, make sure you don't rely on spell check. Us admissions people have the most fun time sharing what we've read on the essays. We have a barrel of laughs. Grouped and groped are two different words that does not get picked up by spell check. So make sure you're reviewing it, you're having someone else help you out with that, okay? Don't regurgitate your essay. We're not looking to uh, see what you, we've already seen on the, the, the application. So we wanna learn something about you. And this allows you to talk a little bit about any extenuating circumstances, challenges, allows you to express your individuality, I've seen poems, I've seen short stories, fictional short stories. I've had students who have shared that uh, the reason for their downward uh, trend in grades was because they had a stroke at the age of 15. So this allows us to move beyond that transcript and that GPA and see who you are as an individual. And again, this allows you to share any of the challenges that have come up throughout your uh, tenure in high school. Letters of rec, uh, don't assume the letter will be glowing. I've seen some very scathing so-called letters of recommendation uh, from teachers that did not respect the student. So make sure you got someone that can advocate for you, uh, someone that can uh, validate your ability to do well in our calculus courses, in our English courses, in the classroom setting. 
and find someone that will ad advocate for you. Okay, so you're probably going to want to uh, buddy up to your teachers from junior year because they're going to see you for the entire year. Uh, if you're getting a letter of recommendation from a senior teacher, you've only seen them for a couple months by the time you're applying. They won't know you as well. So when they saw you for the entire academic year. I always like to think of the essay as the Where's Waldo moment. Sometimes I feel like I'm dating myself, but I've been told that uh, students uh, who are soon to graduate understand the Where's Waldo, okay? So imagine all these figures here represent all the applications I will read in one year. Let's say there's 2,500, 2,500 students that I will read their applications. And there might be one that I remember the essay because it was original, uh, it was creative. It was well written. So I want you to think of this as your Waldo's moment. You want to be the Waldo. So make sure you put some effort into the essay itself, okay? Now, what the, uh, the college admission scandal really emphasized is people manipulating what they know that the university might need. Okay, what are the demands of the university? Um, let's give you an example, a very clear example. Let's say uh, a couple years ago, Santa Clara University wanted to enroll 100 more first year engineering students than the year before, okay? How does that impact the application review process? Well, if you think about it, in order to get 100 students in the door, they have to accept 700 additional engineering students compared to the year before, okay? Uh, in order to get 100, they might have to uh, accept 700. So that means that's 700 students of other majors that would have gotten in the year before, aren't gonna get in this year, okay? Now you might not know what these demands are. These are just some of the pressures that are put on us as, as admissions counselors from the up the up in the upstairs offices. I like to refer to some of these as the X factor, and this is what the college admission scandal really manipulated, okay? So these are the issues that you that aren't published, you might not know about, but we know and we have to keep in mind because we don't wanna bring in the same type of student uh, over and over and over again, okay? Uh, for example, uh, Santa Clara doesn't wanna bring in uh, 2000 engineers. They want the bio majors, they want drama majors, they want English majors. Uh, even though uh, you might get stronger applicants from engineering, they still want a diverse student body, okay? So some examples of the X factor. I just talked about an example of major. Um, this will impact how we look at an application. Like I said, uh, for an engineer, we're gonna look at very strong math and science grades. That's not necessary if they're an English major. Demographic interests, uh, a number of years ago, the University of Portland wanted more California students. So I went out and got us more California students. We now have more Californians at the University of Portland uh, than any other state, okay? Some uh, other examples of demographic interests might be one of the most concerning issue amongst colleges is the male-female ratio. There are more women going to college. We'd rather see a more 50-50 ratio. So that might impact how we review some of the males compared to some of the females. Fair or not, that's just the way it works. Uh, athletics, uh, you know, a, a recruit quarterback is going to be looked at very differently. When I talk about achievements, uh, awards, being the class president, uh, being an Eagle Scout, uh, having the most number of service hours in school, those things mean something to us. Legacy, that's been very controversial. So what this represents is, did your did a family member also go to that college, okay? Uh, if you're applying to Harvard, you have a 50% chance better of getting in if you're a legacy than if you were not a legacy. And some schools are actually getting rid of the whole legacy piece to the application review process. And then Ms. Hansen also talked about the level of interest. Um, Let's say, again, I had that 3.50 student, two of them, okay? 
one student just came out of nowhere. You call them stealth applicants. They just showed up on our desk with an applicant. I have no idea why they're interested, how they got interested, how long they've been interested, so on and so forth. Where person number two went to Sarah High School, saw me when I visited the high school, came to visit the campus and took a tour, had a meeting with a Bay Area alumni representative, showed demonstrated interest. I'd rather get have that kid than the kid that is a stealth applicant. It might be frustrating to know that admissions can be as much of an art as it is a science. Uh, just a real quick note that uh, parents, don't be that parent. I think some of you, or at least your kids will know who those parents are. Uh, there are some schools, I think Stanford and Princeton have the worst parents list on a bulletin in their office. And these represent the most uh, overreaching parents, the most helicopter parents you could ever imagine. We actually have a new word, it's called a snowplow parent. The parent that just clears the way out of the road so the student never has to deal with any adversity. Are you the parent that is commandeering the tour? Are you the parent that insists on being on the, in the interview? Uh, are you the parent that calls the admissions office pretending to be the student? These things happen. Don't be that parent. We pay attention to that, okay? Now, here's some reality that you need to keep in mind. 80% of schools accept more than 50% of the applications, okay? So the majority of students are getting into colleges across the country on a wide scale. 85% of students are accepted to their first choice college. So don't think that kids aren't getting in, okay? In reality is most campuses nationwide fail to meet their enrollment goals. There are more seats than there are students, especially in the class of 24 and 25, because 18 years before that, the Great Recession hit and people stopped having kids. And so schools are going to be, basically schools are going to be suffering a little bit with revenue. So they're going to want you. We want you. Uh, it's not going to be as competitive as 2009, which was the peak of the college bound student. So how am I doing on time right now? I am 15 minutes in. All right, so I'm gonna go over one additional piece real quick. Uh, when talking about the college search, again, this might seem pretty far away, but I just want you to keep in mind that the college search is all about finding the good fit. And the counselors at, at Sarah are gonna drill that in your head. Uh, Stanford isn't for everyone. Uh, Going to a school that is not as well nationally known is not a bad thing. You want to find the school where you can be yourself, your authentic self. And it can be very frustrating to find that. How am I going to do that? Uh, choosing college is personal and emotional. Uh, what I want to do is go over the five major factors in choosing a school that's a right fit. So I always, use, I always like to use these analogies. Uh, what's the difference between, let's say, Loyola Marymount? And uh, that's not a good example for you all because both those are in state. So let's say you were to look at University of Washington and Seattle University. Okay, they're both in Seattle. What's the big difference? Size of the student body population. Find the size that's right for you. If you want to go big, you can go big. You can go to a school that has 83,000 students. If you want to go small, those are available too with under a thousand students. There are advantages and disadvantages to both. Try to find the one that is best for you. Try to be realistic. Oh, Mr. Williams, I I've gone to a small Catholic school my whole life. I want to be anonymous. I want to go big. Then they get into that first classroom that has 800 students and they get overwhelmed very quickly. Okay. What is the main difference between, let's say, Marquette University and Notre Dame? Both are very solid. Catholic schools in the Midwest. Location, location, location. Do you want urban? Do you want to go out of state? Do you want a college town? Do you want a rural setting? Uh, <clears throat> every one of these types of locations offer something very advantageous. Academic, academic and professional goals. Uh, 
does the school off your major? That's basically the number one issue, okay? But also you wanna find out, can you pursue multiple disciplines? Can you switch majors? Can you go study abroad? Do you offer support for things like pre-med? Are you gonna graduate in four years? That's a big issue here in the state of California. And will you have access to internships, research, so on and so forth? This factor uh, relates to you visiting the school and falling in love with it, okay? That's why we go visit schools, to try to get that all important feel, okay? Uh, visit schools, uh, talk to graduates from Sarah that are at the schools, maybe ask to meet with alumni in the area. Uh, if you wanna visit a class, you can do that. Uh, visiting is something that was taken away from the class of 2020 and for the most part, class of 21. Now that schools are opening up again, take advantage and go visit to try to get that feel. <clears throat> uh, and then lastly, parents affordability. Okay, now parents, I just wanna reemphasize that uh, your student is the bus driver. You are the navigator. I also want you to think of this as the student being the CEO and you're the CFO. So you have to figure out what is affordable. And there's, you know, there's a couple myths out there. Uh, don't worry about costs. Well, of course you gotta worry about costs. You don't wanna be in debt for the rest of your life uh, or uh, just go for the cheapest school. Well, the cheapest school might not be the best fit. So you're gonna wanna look for the merit scholarships that are available, talent awards like athletics or drama or music. Can you graduate in four years? Uh, look for outside scholarships. And of course, the return on investment. Uh, will you be getting a job by the time you graduate? Financial aid is a big part of the process. So don't let the sticker price scare you right out of the gates. Again, to recap, size of a student body, location, academic opportunities, culture, and affordability. It's not a race, it's a romance. Visit college campuses. What if you aren't qualified for your first choice school? So my nephew, his, both his parents went to Notre Dame. Uh, since he was five years old, he was going to Notre Dame games every fall. Um, <clears throat> I lost my picture here. Um, well, he was pretty crushed when he didn't get into Notre Dame. Uh, the average SAT at the time was about a 1540. He had good grades, but the SAT kind of did him in. He was pretty crushed, but he recalibrated. He decided to go to Marquette University, and he had the most amazing time you could ever, ever imagine at a, uh, at during college. And he just married the woman that he met uh, while in college when he was a senior and she was a sophomore. So pretty excited about that. But Mark Twain likes, oh, I'm sorry, not Mark Twain. The Dalai Lama has something to say for, about this. Sometimes not getting what you want is a wonderful stroke of luck. So uh, again, I know it's early. Uh, I'll see you again in your senior year. Uh, we can go over this again, we can recap. Just keep your eyes on the prize. Uh, it, you're gonna find a good place to go to college. Sarah does prepare you. you maybe not all of you are going to Stanford, but you're gonna land on your feet and you're gonna get to have a great time. So I'm gonna hand it back over to Chris. I thank you for your time. I thank you for allowing me to speak with you all today. Take it away. Wow, Mr. Williams, uh, thank you so much for, uh, for sharing. Uh, by the way, I actually wrote that down. It's not a race, it's a romance. I, I, I really liked that. That's awesome. Thank you. I'm going to steal that and use it um, as my own somewhere in a presentation. So thank you. <laughs> and Just most make sure you give me credit for it, okay? <laughs> yeah, you got it. You got it. <laughs> uh, most importantly, thank you to all the students and to the families that, that stuck with us tonight. We know it's late um, and, and guys are going in there doing their homework, hopefully working hard. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Um, again, we will be uh, looking at the questions uh, document and sending out an FAQ um, document back your way uh, soon. And uh, Ms. Hansen, any other closing thoughts? Yes, uh, just thank you for being here. It was lovely to share this evening with all of you. Um, if you have questions, please reach out, send an email. Um, we will be following up on those questions like Mr. Quarry said. Um, and we will be sending out um, a, a list of the most frequently asked questions to everyone. So even if you didn't ask the question, you might be interested in some of the questions from fellow parents and Padres. 
and we will be getting as much information to you as possible and um, have a wonderful rest of your night. Thank you for being here. Yeah.